Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Alright, we're about to hop into it. Um, if y'all don't got y'all snacks, go grab them. If y'all do, you, you, you already know what time it is. Let's go. Calm. This was maybe only months before Tinder started getting popular, and I had a way better experience I appreciate with that, that, Jamal. But then instead of just holding off for a few months, I was so desperate that I went with the jankiest, most depressing website in history. Plenty of fish. Plenty of oh, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> um, just just put the number one if you have ever used uh, a dating app. If you have ever used a dating app, put drop down the number one in the chat. I'll go ahead and say it. I use a dating app at once upon a time, but I don't use it now. But I've used it in the past one time, and it's pretty crazy. Um, I got a oh yeah, I got a um a story time for you guys, but I'm gonna put that on. I'm gonna make that a separate video, but I got a story time from from using that app that I'm gonna post on the channel if you guys wanna check it out when it comes out. <clears throat> using it, there seemed to be a lot of really sad looking divorcees who put their last few chips on finding love online. I mean, all power to them. They deserve it and I hope they find someone. But reading all the stories of divorce and wanting to remember what real love feels like as a 24 year old guy, it was just uber depressing sometimes. But then, after a month or two of striking out, I get talking to this cute girl who's the same age as me and as the days go by, we really started hitting it off. We had to wait until I was home from college in December to actually meet up, but she was great conversation and she was so cute, so I don't mind waiting to date her. And even better, when it came to actually organizing something, she invited me over to her family's home because her mom and dad were out of town visiting relatives for the holiday. I know it might sound crude, but finding out that her folks wouldn't be there was when I figured that it would no longer be just a movie and a pizza kind of deal, and that if I played it right, I actually might get to eat breakfast there too, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> anyway, I go oh, over to her place okay. for what amount of day. They're holding hands, get sitting close on the couch, the pillows are on the other side. Alright, she's got the lipstick on with the hair done, with the dress. Hey, look at him smiling. Okay, let's go back. First date. Everything went smooth and I ended up staying overnight. Then, Whoa. the next morning, I wake up earlier than she does and I'm just sort of lying there, watching her sleep. I know that sounds creepy, but she looks super cute asleep All and right. generally reveling in that hey, life. Hey, right here, <laughs> right here, I'm guessing who the creep is going to be, the, the, the one that's being sinister. <clears throat> I think it's going to be the lady. I think the lady's going to be the creep. It kind of seems obvious, but I don't know for sure. But let's listen up. Let's see. Feeling of victory you get after a date going well. The next thing I know, I hear the front door open and slam as someone enters the house downstairs. Suddenly I'm rolling out of bed to get dressed because there's no way I want my first introduction to her parents to be just appearing in their house having obviously slept with her daughter. Me rolling out of bed wakes her up too and when she hears someone downstairs, she starts freaking out and telling me to hide as we begin hearing someone walking up the stairs. I just throw on what little clothing I had in reach then basically dived under the girl's bed and kept really, really still and quiet. Hold on! Hold, what's going on here, bro? Are you about to stand? Get your weapon! Get the bat, the gat, and wait for that guy to, he gonna hide under the bed. Seconds later, I see the door open, and the feet of the guy I assumed was her dad walking into her room. But then the way he started talking to her was not how any dad talks oh, to his daughter. Shoot. At first, I assumed the worse, like they had some kind of really unhealthy relationship or something, especially when I heard them kiss. Oh, it whoa! Like Oh, what? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, well, she had to play it off. She had to keep it straight. She couldn't have, like, you know, not kissed him. Then he's going to think it's weird. Like, why you didn't kiss me all of a sudden? But so, but that's messed up, though. That's crazy to be in that. He's under the bed, bro. That is crazy. Let's go, man.
not like it was on the lips. But then, as they carried on talking, I realized that they definitely weren't father and daughter, and that my date had some kind of weird sugar daddy relationship with this guy while living in his house. Oh my The gosh. idea of getting caught by that guy and not the girl's dad had me way, way more scared for some reason. This is loco. But then when he said that he was going to go take a shower, I breathed a sigh of relief knowing that I actually had an escape route. The second the guy left the room, I scrambled out from under the bed and started putting the rest of my clothes on, whispering to the girl like, what the actual F were you thinking putting me in danger like this? She's just like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't think he'd be home so soon. She didn't even address the fact that it wasn't even her parents' place, and I was so mad about all the things she'd lied about that I didn't even bother to bring them up. After all, the priority was getting dressed and getting out of there. I figured since the guy was in the shower, I'd have at least a window of like five minutes to get down the stairs out the front door without him being any the wiser. But then... Right as I walked out of the girl's room and onto the upstairs landing. Man, you supposed to... <clears throat> you're not supposed to move as soon as he get out. You're supposed to hear the shower running and hear him in the shower. My, th This guy, come on, son. Oh, Pillsbury is delicious, by the way. But why are you moving so quick? You got to wait till you get in the shower, my guy. Goodness gracious. Dead people don't know how to sneak out here, bro. People don't know how to sneak, man. You, you can't be moving so fast. You gotta wait. It's a stealth game. ...out of the bathroom, and nothing but a towel, and we lock eyes right there and then. There's just this brief moment where all he says is, Who are you? And then he sort of just looks over my shoulder at the bedroom and quickly puts two and two together. I started running down the stairs before he even reacted but I knew that he was chasing me just from the sound of him screaming right behind me. Oh, shoot. I ended up struggling with the front door for oh a second. Oh my gosh. Just long enough for him to grab me by the shirt, but somehow I managed to pull myself out of his grip and get some more distance between us. Then I look around, and the guy is chasing me down his driveway. Bro, are you chasing her? Naked, him? With a look on his face. Like oh, yo. Getting chased by a naked guy is scary, bro. His j is... You already know what it is, but I don't know what the guy said. Seriously about to kill me if he caught up with me. Heck no. I swear to God, I've never been so terrified in my whole <laughs> life. Oh my gosh. Not just of having the crap beaten out of me by a guy way bigger than me. Oh shoot. But having the life beaten out of me by a naked dude. Bro, that's that was crazy. That this whole other level of fear. <laughs> the next time I looked behind me, the guy was gone, and I figured that he suddenly realized that he was running through the early morning streets with no clothes on. <laughs> before bailing back inside before anyone called the cops. Probably even weirder than that, though, was the fact that the girl actually wanted to see me again. Heck no. It kind of dawned on me that she actually liked the idea of two guys fighting over her, and that she was just some manipulative, cheating skank. I didn't see her again. I just deleted her number, and she stopped trying to contact me. But sometimes I wonder if she hooks some other guy into her little game and that he wasn't so lucky in being able oh my. to get away. He probably wasn't, man. She probably got somebody else, and he probably got got. He probably was beaten down. This all happened during my first year in uni. I once agreed to go out on a date oh, with a from London. guy that also seemed pretty nice. Uni is so a London obviously term. Obviously, I'm chuffed. Or English. He'd approach me in the city center, saying he recognized me from uni, then he laid down loads of charm before asking loads me Loads of charm? So yep, she's, I decided she's to from, see uh, how it would go. She's from England. First date. He started by being a gentleman. You know, holding the door open for me, pulling out my chair, that sort of thing. He was actually pretty good at conversation, too. Things felt natural and chilled. We had a nice dinner, too, but then when it came to the end of the night, he started to really push into the physical, whereas I was in no hurry at all. I had to straight up tell him to back it up because I am not that type of girl. I didn't know nearly enough about him to trust him and honestly thought he was smart enough to respect that. But after that date, he started constantly texting me at all hours and would get irritated to the point of threatening if I didn't message him back. He called me 12 times in the middle of the night, each call coming one after the other. 
There were a bunch of weird messages like, why aren't you answering when I need you? And I just couldn't take any more from him. I was very straight and curt. I told him he needed to back off and chill out, but his response was to tell me that he was in love with me. I felt these intense, twin feelings of cringe and dread. <clears throat> cringe because of how obviously cringe it was to say that so early, Yeah. then dread because I realized getting rid of this guy would be a total ordeal. It's going to be a long I texted challenge. back something like, I have no idea how you can think that because you've barely gotten to know me and I hardly know you. He then followed up with this barrage of texts that continued long into the night. He acting like each a one crazy lady out more here. more and more creepier as the night went on. I remember he'd always send two messages, real quick, one after the other, and the heck? one pair was like, in all capitals, Why aren't you answering? I thought you were the one, and you can't even text or call? How That's messed up. How fast then are you texting out with, here, man? Don't make me come find you. Whoa. He mostly kept to that same pattern for the whole time that he was texting me that night. One text would frighten the life out of me, then the other would read like he was trying to convince me that it was all my fault, or that I shouldn't be so scared of him even though he just said something incredibly scary. I wish that I had been somewhere other than my uni dorm, which was away from where all my friends from lecture were staying because there was no one there to stop me reading his messages. I know I should have stopped for the sake of my own sanity, but at the same time, I just couldn't stop reading them. I remember wanting to know if he had actually found me, or had said anything like, I'm on my way to you, and I wanted to know if I really needed to worry about my safety, so I just kept on soaking up all this horrible words and threats until I just turned my phone off and cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I demanded that he delete my number and stop contacting me because he was scaring me. He responded by trying to call me roughly 30 times throughout the day. Then when he realized that I wasn't going to answer, he texted another night until I turned my phone off. One morning, I had to be up for 6 for work and I must have forgotten to put my phone on do not disturb because it just started screeching my ringtone on the bedside table, waking me up in the process. When I saw that it was his name on the screen, I just lost it. I actually answered the call then proceeded to give him what for. I told him that his behavior was disturbing, and that I truly thought that he needed help, and that I really didn't know him enough to be at the receiving end of this, how I just didn't bloody deserve it. She got a I long think he behind was just in shock that I answered the call in the first place, because he just broke into apologies and started telling me how sorry he was that he'd been so immature. I could barely get a word out, as he told me how if I gave him another chance, I'd be glad that I did and that we were so right for each other and he was just overwhelmed by it all. I thought I was rid of him, but to hear how he was just so completely deluded and over-emotional about a first date was as scary as it was depressing. I just went with a nuclear option. I told him I didn't want to see him again, and that if he contacted me again with any threatening messages, I'd be going straight to the police. Straight to the police. He didn't even respond when I told him that. He just went all quiet, either out of sadness or out of rage. Then after a few seconds of silence, I just hung up. The next month or so was pretty blissful. I didn't hear from him at all, and the whole incident went from being a fresh wound to something I joke about with friends. Then suddenly he starts writing me on Facebook, commenting on all my pictures and posting all kinds of stuff Dang. on my wall. He's trying to I get naively you. lowered all my privacy settings so that people I met at uni could contact me easier as I was still a first year and I wanted to network. Big mistake on my part. And as much as I blocked and reported him as quick as I could, in my mind, the damage was already done. As some of the people I'd met over the year now thought that I had some weird obsessive boyfriend. After that, he started sending me emails that said emails? things like, I can't stop thinking about you. Oh, la Sometimes I see you around and it kills me that I screwed up my chances with you. He's such a decent person, but it's pretty messed up how you handled things. I didn't reply. I just made sure to block all his social media and email addresses as I figured showing him any attention at all would just make things worse. Yeah, he coming for that. It definitely seemed to work for a while, as his attempts at communication dropped off completely. But then things escalated in a way that was even creepier than his attempts to talk to me online. So during the last few months of my first year, I managed to get myself a part-time job at a little cafe in the town center. 
Then, towards the end of one shift, my colleague started talking about some guy who had been sitting across the road from the cafe on some steps oh, and how no. he'd been there for hours. <laughs> I got this sinking scared, feeling right son. away and asked one of them what the guy looked like and they pretty much described my stalker to a T. When I went to make sure that it was him, basically praying that it was just some kind of coincidence, my stomach That's dropped him. when I saw him sitting there, staring at the front windows of the cafe. That's scary. We made brief eye contact for a second, then I went straight into the back of the house to tell the manager what was going on, and told me to stay in the little manager's office to phone the police while she went out to tell the guy that the police were on their way, and he shouldn't be hanging around outside a girl's workplace waiting for her to leave. Over the next week or so, I was in touch with a police officer who asked me to share all records of times the guy had communicated with me, especially all the threatening messages he'd sent me. Luckily, I would had the presence of mind to screenshot the more violent and threatening messages just in case I had to actually go to the police. I didn't want it to be an empty threat. I wanted to be able to really show the guy that I meant business so the police could show up at his business. place or give him a call to let him know that they knew what he was up to. Big body. And that's exactly what they did. They gave him a call to check his thinking, as the one officer put it. Then after that, he didn't attempt to contact me again. That incident of stalking at the cafe was the last interaction I had with the guy, but it wasn't the last I heard of him. A whole year later, I was talking with a girl in the smoking area of a pub I was drinking at, and the conversation got on to student dating. She started telling me how she'd gone on one date with a guy that she thought was really handsome and charming, and he turned out to be a complete nightmare. I asked her how he was a nightmare and she basically described the exact same behavior I'd been subjected to the year before. I asked her if the guy was named Liam, and her jaw dropped before saying, Yes, how did you know? Liam out here, man. I spilled my guts on how the exact same thing happened Liam to me, out here trying to get people. and basically told her to do all the same things I did. Screenshot messages, forward them to the police, and most importantly, do not engage. She seemed really, really grateful to be talking to someone who knew what she was going through and we kept in touch to make sure Liam left her alone too. We're still good friends actually, even all these years later and although we're not in the same city anymore, we still keep in touch to provide a bit of dating support network so to speak. Thankfully, nothing like that has ever happened to me since but at least I know that if it does, I'm actually equipped to deal with it in a way that I just wasn't when I was younger. <clears throat> Liam is after the chicks, man. He will stalk you until he gets this you. This all happened when I was 19 years old. I'm not the best looking dude, so I've never really had much luck with women, and I ended up on Tinder. Tinder? I wasn't having much luck on there either, Tinder until bender. Like the third month of using it, when a Slender. blonde woman named Katie then messed She was pretty enough that I just dismissed her as a bot. It wasn't until about three days later that she messaged me again, which was really odd because bots almost never messaged me more than once. I clicked on her chat and then replied, then looked at her profile. What I saw was pretty generic, but definitely wasn't a bot's profile. We had been talking for like a month when she proposed the idea that I come see her. All right, all right, so, <laughs> so she want to come see, she want him to come see her. Let's see what, hey. Immediately, what comes to my mind is a dude behind that uh, that profile. That's what comes to my mind. A dude is behind a profile. He's trying to get get got, or he's trying to get him got. Let's see. I was pretty reluctant as she lived nearly eight hours away from me by car, but I had to admit I really did like her quite a bit, and I'd actually been thinking for a while now about asking if I could go see her. After a bit more badgering from her, I finally said that I would take the drive to go see her. <laughs> At this point, I really had no reason to doubt she was who she said she was. We had video chatted about every other week and called most days. Okay. I just assumed that I got really- Video chat is a good sign because at least you saw the person. So, all right. So now what comes to my mind is, okay, the person's video chatting. The person's video chatting. All right. And I'm thinking if it's still a setup, they could just be using the girl. For the setup, you know, having her face on there and having a video chat. Then when the person or the guy goes to the spot, he get jacked by some other guys 
that's controlling the whole operation. That's what's next in my head. I don't know what's coming up, but that's what I think about. Let's continue. We're lucky. Things did get a little weird though on the way there. She kept messaging me, asking me where I was, and making sure that I was still coming. And she wanted that bad? At some points, whenever I took more than 30 minutes to respond, she would send me a slew of annoyed texts. Admittedly, I had chalked this up to her being nervous about me coming to see her. I was pretty nervous too, so I couldn't really blame her. I had a really hard time finding the house at first. The directions that she gave me were pretty confusing, and it was back through a series of gravel and dirt roads and a large thicket of trees. That's weird. It was still about midday when I came into an old looking house. A window nope. on the second floor was all boarded up, but it didn't really look abandoned, oh, just worse for wear. Katie's red buggy that she would always talk about was parked right in front of the garage. I took out my phone and texted her that I was here and she only sent me a smiley face in return. Yo, When what? I got out of my car to go knock I'm on the scared. door, I'm nervous. I noticed someone was looking at me from Bro, the second floor you see? windows. I found it a little What? Hold on. Creepy, but figured it was just her father or something. No, bro. I told y'all. <laughs> I told y'all, bro. She is setting this guy. I feel like he go. I feel like it's a setup. I feel like she's the face of the operation, right? They're using her as as the face of the operation to lure people in. Want to get people in? They gonna swarm them and jack them. I don't even know. If, and they probably might slice them up, throw them into the backyard, bro, with the other guys. But let's see what happens. She had told me that he comes to stay with her every now and again, so I just ignored it and knocked on her door. She answered with a smile and even gave me a kiss, which really surprised me, and wow. I followed her inside. Uh -oh. We nervous. sat down on her couch and started talking about her plans when I asked her about her dad. So, you didn't tell me your dad was here. Was that going to be a surprise, or... I said. Katie looked really confused and she told me that her dad wasn't there. And I told her that she didn't have to keep pretending and that I'd seen him looking at me through the upstairs window. Katie went pale and she said that we had to get out of that house right now. We both ran out to our cars and when I questioned Katie, she informed me that her dad wasn't there and that she had been home alone until I showed up. Oh, I called shoot. the police and while I was on the phone giving the address, Katie then gasped and she pointed to the window where I had seen the guy last. Oh. He was now looking at us from out the window again. I got a better look at him and he seemed a bit older and frail, almost like he hadn't eaten anything in a really long time. He then left the window after he saw that we saw him. The police took about a half an hour to show up and the whole time Katie was crying. She, she was got also killed. mumbling about how she was an idiot for not keeping her doors locked. When the police finally did show up, one started asking me and Katie questions and the other two searched the house. They came back out. Let me guess, the guy was gone. Goodness gracious, bro. He came through, he came in like a rat, bro. He came through the walls. A little while later, and they told me and Katie that while they didn't find anyone, they did find out that the back door was hanging open. Okay. Whoever it was had run out into the woods, and the cops were pretty sure the house was empty. After the cops left, Katie asked me to stay the night because she was too scared to be in her house alone. I gladly did and we slept downstairs on the couch as Katie's bedroom was right next to the one that the man had been Man, listen bro, I wouldn't have stayed there, slept, slept with, bro, I would not have stayed in that, well, yeah, nah, cause it's in the woods and stuff like that, so I would have been like, nah, come over to the, let's go to the city, let's go where, the, where let's go where the lights and power is, cause this is wild, bro. Been in. Anybody could be Katie in Katie had also brought out the Jeez, sh she got a shoddy! Woo! Katie, re Katie is ready. L listen, don't mess with Katie, man. Katie will get you. What? Uh, she got the shoddy for the body. Katie is not hottie. She ain't, bro, bro Katie. I rock, okay, K Katie made a mistake, but she's equipped for the stink. I tried to rhyme, but Katie is ready for action. I like Katie. Katie know what's going on shotgun that her father had given her but she never used i told her it was fine the man's oh, gone but it? she insisted saying she'd feel safer if we had it out i'm really glad she did <laughs> later that night i was still wide awake watching tv katie had somehow managed to fall asleep 
right from the kitchen. See, I I've told heard the you, sound bro. Of a doorknob being turned. See, I at this bro. point I wasn't even scared. I was just pissed. I flipped nah. on the light in the kitchen. He got that shotgun confidence. He, he got that shotgun confidence, man. He know that, bro. That shotgun give you confidence, man. You will blast a bear away with that. Wow. Wow, sees. Pointed the gun at the kitchen door, and there he was. The very same guy that had been in the house he before come was standing back. on the other side of the glass door. He looked shocked, and I'm really glad we had locked the door. The man unfroze and yet again ran into the woods. I woke up Katie and I told her what happened, and we called the police yet again. When they arrived, they did a sweep of the woods and found no one yet again. They told me and Katie that it'd probably be a good idea to stay somewhere else for the night. Exactly, bro. Me and Katie said our house. goodbyes. She was going to go stay at her friend's house and I was going to go home. I left a little bit after Katie did. I was on the phone with my brother telling him what happened. My headlights were on. As I was talking on the phone, something caught my eye. That same freaking man was standing at the corner of the house just watching me. I what immediately the? gunned it out of there, and I didn't even bother calling the police again. This guy is But a... I did text Katie about it, and she said that she was going to call them again. I don't think that Katie ever even went back to that house alone ever again. No, I don't do And it. I really can't say that I blame her for that. So yeah, that was definitely one of the scariest nights of my life. Hey, man. <clears throat> you know what I mean? This is, you know, it's obvious business over here, bro. Definitely... I would have gotten out that house and, and not have slept there during the night because I already knew. I already knew the guy was probably going to come back. You know, I already knew he was probably going. Dang, this is like a movie. My camera is is looking crispy right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, man, I got the hair out today. Uh, but anyway, this was a crazy situation. How many of you would have stayed and slept inside the house? Me personally, I would have had to leave. We seen a weird guy in the woods. I don't know how many of his friends are in there. I don't know who else is around. I gotta get out of town. I gotta I gotta leave that spot. I would have told her, hey, we gotta get up out of here. The shotgun would have gave me confidence, but I'm not gonna stay there. I'm not trying to stay there and find out if he comes back or you know see what happens next. Heck no, get the shoddy, get your stuff, and let's get up out of here. You know, matter of fact, I would have left when the police came. You know, probably would have. I would have probably left before that. I would be. Hey, let's let's get up out of here. Let's get our stuff. Let's dip. Let's call the police. They can come and check it out. Bob, bop. And but we're at the safe place away from the house. Cause I don't got time to 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 find out what might happen, bro. Nah, I'm not playing that game. So that's that story. Um, let us move forward, man. <clears throat> 